Uh, my name's Alan Ryan. There's another Alan Ryan at the university, so I get to use the middle initial. And this is uh, Gabriella Avram. And we're from the University of Limerick. And I'll stand over here so I can see the timer, so there'll be an appearance of uh, preparation. So we're talking about 3D printing uh, makers and co-design. I'll let him speak on his slide. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm studying interaction design or digital media design in Limerick and I had an internship uh, last year in the Interaction Design Centre and another this year. I'm a lurker at Milk Labs, so I am prone to turning up without warning and stand in the background and Gabriella will take the next And one. I am a lecturer as I said and I'm a senior researcher in the Interaction Design Centre. I'm also a member of uh, Milk Labs which is the local maker space made in Limerick. Uh, a co-organizer of an annual event called 3D Camp and a member of the Irish Makerspaces Network because we get together quite a lot. Uh, Irish people are quite famous worldwide perhaps for our literature and music but that's facilitated by the fact that English is our first language but it's also a very strong community-based culture in every way with healthcare and families and we're hoping that that attitude will certainly facilitate our communities in technology. Uh, a little bit about our local maker space. It started in 2010. We had a place in a, an old church. It was wonderful, but we were paying a lot of money. So at the moment, we are hosted at the university. And uh, there's all kind of Arduino workshops. Recently, we acquired our first 3D printer. And, yeah. And so with these uh, maker spaces and hacker spaces, they're spread all about the country. If you know anything about the geography of it, Dublin, Galway, Limerick and Cork, they're essentially at the corners of the country. And we have Lightbox and Drogheda and in Minute and up as far as Belfast. So it is spread quite a bit around. Uh, we have a bar camp style presentation in the university every year. Um, for example, in the previous years they would be quite a loose theme like technology <laughs> but for the last two years it's naturally become focused on digital fabrication because of the interest in it. And that's a guy wearing a 3D printer as a backpack. Uh, we had two editions of a mini maker fair in Dublin in 2012 and 2013. Uh, the presence of uh, um, people almost doubled. It's open air and it's held in July. It wasn't as spectacular as the one I saw yesterday in Kerkrade, but it's good. Um, we ran an exploratory study, uh, being interested mostly in the social aspects of digital fabrication and the potential changes to lifestyle. Uh, we did a quick survey in order to present you a picture of what's going on in Ireland, and we're going to present some of the results. Okay, so we do have uh, hacker spaces. Uh, they wouldn't dream of buying a 3D printer because that would be too easy. They're far happier to buy it in parts and then break it several times before it actually uh, produces anything. But that's what they like. And it's certainly open to the public. Anyone turn up, they'll teach you. And they, they're very much into experimentation. Uh, we have a nerve center in Derry. Uh, technically, it's in the UK. But as it's on the island, we'll take credit for <laughs> We can play that game too. Uh, we have an incoming fab lab in Clock Jordan, Eco Village called Recreate, and certainly these are defined by being public access. Uh, we have some other institutions that are fab lab-ish, not quite, uh, 3D printing, which the guy with the 3D printer in his back was there. We've certainly, a lot of the, or sorry, 3D Dave, a lot of these individuals turn up at our conferences and there's a strong sense of community, but obviously they're not quite a fab lab. A few quotes from the survey we ran, so people defining themselves. One is from a hackerspace member, and uh, this is how he perceives the difference between hackerspaces and fab labs. Uh, other people, especially those involved in digital fabrication as a service, uh, talk about the impact. Uh, also, there's a um, perception that we're a bit slow to take off, although little things in uh, different locations happened in the last five years. And uh, the idea that digital fabrication will lower the barrier of entry for uh, individual designers and uh, encourage innovation. We have some more communities, find it, make it .ie is a fabrication directory so you can tie people together if you, if you want to make things uh, for people then you can do so. If you design something and have no idea how to make it, you can be uh, connected 
uh, with somebody who can produce them. So ag again, uh, just step back up. Okay, uh, our perspective is a sustainable interaction design. So we were looking at how uh, the development of digital fabrication can be uh, made sustainable from the beginning. So we've seen uh, a lot of uh, bad things happening with printing in general, uh, killing a lot of trees. We don't want this to happen with uh, the digital fabrication. So we see a lot of residues. Uh, what I want to say, we're trying to establish a, a tree, uh, fab lab at the University of Limerick. Uh, it started in 2010 when I saw the dream visiting here. And uh, we are trying very hard to uh, convince the powers that be uh, it looks like the money is there, now we have a person who's trained. So as I said, we are looking at the, the sustainability implications, and uh, we see uh, personal and social digital fabrication in their infancy, and there's a need to experiment, which is uh, normal. Uh, we see a lot of uh, home mini fab labs appearing, and this uh, trend toward personal design that uh, Ian spoke about earlier, and our question is, could we uh, incorporate some minimal sustainability uh, constraints into the interfaces? So this is what we're looking at. Uh, and you can contact us at our Twitter accounts. That's a quote from my favorite movie, so if you don't really get any prize if you get it right, I'll just be really impressed. And uh, we'll be hanging around all day. Thank you, Thank you very much. Mike Diena.